One of the worst things that the era of romantic love has taught us is that we are supposed to find a soulmate in a significant other who will be able to meet all of our needs flawlessly, often without even having to communicate our needs to them. I have to say, we've been sold a fantasy that can never come true. Let me get to one thing straight for you. Your spouse is not responsible for your happiness. No one human will ever be able to fulfill all of your needs for you, ever. A happy relationship starts with two happy individuals. You're the only person who can please you in the long run. At first, that might sound a bit scary, but actually it's very liberating. I'll explain more in a bit. If you're new to my channel, Sharifa Namsi is my name. I'm a marriage counselor, CBT therapist, life coach at Let's Fix It Individual and Couples Counseling. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your love and support. Ladies, I have some good news for you. We have an only ladies spa in Bukoto, 180 Glow Wellness Spa. And one of the services that got me so excited was the vaginal health services and sex therapy by moi. You should come. You should make your bookings. I'll leave all the details that you need at the end of the video. So back to my point. The reason why some of us are miserable in our relationships is because we want our partners to be our everything. Our very best friend. Sometimes even our only friend. Our most trusted confidant. The person we should be able to count on no matter what. For everything. Because movies and books tell us this is what romantic love is. This is inarguably a heavy burden to place on someone and you're in for a rude awakening if you're prone to thinking that your partner has to be everything to you and that all of your needs should be fulfilled by them. It's probably time that you let them off the hook of your inflated expectations of their abilities. I need you to remember that when we are in a relationship, <clears throat> we enter a union with another person a whole living flawed human who has an entire internal emotional and mental network completely disparate from our own. We see the world through our own eyes. We live in our own version of reality and we often forget that the other person with whom we share our lives with has their own perspectives, their own existence and their own reality. They have their own fears, doubts, worries, insecurities, shortcomings and anxieties and still we expect them to fill this role for us that only a fictional character could truly fulfill. We expect them to be our very best friend, caretaker, secret pro protector, our orgasm provider, our meal sharer, the one person we turn to nurse every single wound and every single fear. It's indeed a lot of pressure to put on one single person. Why not see your partner as one of the main characters that you keep in your corner without being the only character in your corner? Your romantic partner is the person with whom you want to share your trials and tribulations, the person you snuggle with at night, the person you expect to help you when you stumble. But we have to accept that this person will probably disappoint, frustrate, anger you, and sometimes even let you down. Maybe your partner offers emotional support. The sex is amazing. You laugh a lot together. And you have, you know, easy, effortless conversations. That doesn't mean that simply because you have a high amount of overlap certain areas of your life, that they will also be able to do your taxes, challenge you in your career path, and motivate you to go to the gym every morning. Whatever value your partner brings to your life, like, if they're able to meet, say, 50% of your needs on a semi-consistent basis, you've already hit the jackpot. Finding that much awesomeness in one person is already a rare find. And you should probably thank Allah for having crossed paths with them. So then what do you do with your remaining needs that your partner doesn't fulfill? Successful relationships are the ones where both individuals have support systems outside of their relationship. These successful relationships are compromised of two people who both have their own sets of friends, interests, values. Sure, some of these are shared between the two of them, but there is a strong sense of individuality. Neither of them is each other's everything. 
you my friend are responsible for creating a life that fills you up with contentment and should not be seeking it from the other half it is unfair unrealistic and destructive to place the responsibility for your happiness on anyone other than yourself happiness is homegrown i know a relationship is a huge part of our lives but it's not the only thing a spouse can complement you a spouse can enrich you but a spouse cannot make you whole realizing your spouse cannot be your everything is a lesson that can never be learned too early stop expecting your happiness to derive from just this one space it's going to make you deeply unsatisfied and this could ultimately have a negative impact on your relationship we have careers hobbies friends passions and nature to fill us up we should be extracting happiness with our life as a whole and then presenting that to our partners to share we cannot blame anyone else for our unhappiness we choose what we do with our lives we choose who we spend our time with what career path we go down or what passions we work on if you're not making good choices in any of these areas and that is ultimately making you unhappy why should that blame be put on anyone else we can change our circumstances anytime so you just have to go ahead and do it bwenga gwe nawe bakubuze bikusanyusa tutobimanyi but you expect your partner to know and fill the void in your life how are you dating a magician your partner should not be single handedly responsible for making you feel better when you're sad stronger when you feel weak or more empowered when you feel scared they should not be the only person you ever want to spend time with sure they can be one of your best friends maybe even your favorite friend but the entire weight of your happiness and emotional safety should not be placed on their shoulders now look when i hear a woman say my husband is my everything i know that ultimately translates to unrealistic expectations that will more often than not go unmet while it's a sweet sentiment that sounds romantic a form that a marriage is healthiest when your husband or wife is not your everything your partner is definitely your most important relationship don't get me wrong and should be treated as such but i cannot overstate how relieved they will be when you allow them some independence some breathing space and to be who they are and allow your friends relatives hobbies to fill in the blanks allow yourself to experience the value in a variety of relationships a lot of very good exercise that will help you identify all of your needs and then systematically create a plan to get them all met it's called me my partner and others ultimately this whole process comes down to a simple two step set of questions one what do you want and how do i go about getting those needs met and who do i need to help me accomplish those goals discover all of your core needs as it is with most areas of your life you must start with you know self reflection what exactly are your core needs pull out a piece of paper or something to jot down notes with and answer the following five questions fully one what do i do that has me feeling at my best two what have been my five favorite days that i can remember in my life in the past 10 years what made those particular days so special three what do i know that i love doing that i haven't prioritized in a while four what things do i do that you know when i'm doing them i feel so enraptured by them that i lose track of time and five what ten things do i do that give me the most energy Now once you've brain dumped out all of your thoughts look for the common threads what makes you the happiest what makes you feel most alive now that you know here's how to create a plan to get those particular needs met first of all recognize that you are the only person in the world who is responsible for getting your needs met i'm emphasizing this it isn't your partner's job to remind you to go to the gym It it is it is at your children's job to remind you that you have to make time for self care. Your business partner was not put on the planet to encourage you to set boundaries around your work life balance and prioritizing downtime. 
So how do we get these needs met? One, take out a separate piece of paper and draw two long lines, dividing the page into three vertical sections, labeled me, my partner, and others. Now allocate different needs of yours into three distinct categories, right? Some of your needs you can meet all on your own, like, you know, going for a walk. You don't even want to do that. And others, you will need people to help you accomplish them, like getting your nails done, a massage, or having a stimulating conversation. Do you want an idea on how this would play out? Let me give you a few examples of my personal lists. Some examples from my me section are exercising in my living room three times a week, reading at least six pages per day, eating healthy meals at least four days a week, allowing myself the stillness and relaxation of social downtime, and uh, some of the examples from my partner section are emotional support, regular cuddling, sexual intimacy, having a partner in healing and growing alongside me. And uh, some of the examples from my other section are feeling challenged in my career path, making meaningful uh, connections, having regular philosophical conversations about life, regularly spending time only with people who support me in my spiritual and life development. Now that you've uncovered what your needs are and who you need to prioritize in your life to get those needs met, it's simply a matter of making it happen. If you know that you need regular exercise, stimulating conversations, a girl's night out, a guy's night, massages, etc., in order to feel truly, deeply fulfilled, then make it happen. The greatest gift that you can give to your friends, family members, partners, or children is your own happiness. So make yourself a priority. Get your needs met from a variety of people and take some pressure off of the people in your life that you rely on the most. That's it. That's the exercise. Recognize which needs you can meet solely on your own, what you need from your partner, what needs you can get with the support of other people outside of the intimate relationship then get those needs met by systematically making them a priority. Well, best of luck with the exercise. I hope you find lots of clarity and value in it. For personalized assistance, reach me on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.